Palestinian Authority love the conflict as it is, and the fact is that the Palestinians have leadership. That's a very well known fact. That their leadership and they're getting sold down the river by their leadership. But it doesn't absolve Israel of responsibility. It doesn't deny the Nakba as it was. The Nakba did not happen. So you use the term Nakba, yeah? What? So you, you use the term Nakba yeah. describing the creation of Israel as a catastrophe. That's their narrative. That's not a Jewish narrative. Had in 1948, the Palestinians, the Arabs, instead of trying to genocide the Jews, we would have, we would have two nations living side by side, hopefully coexisting with trade deals, but instead the Arabs chose a path of genocide and conflict, which is still being waged to this day. For you to present that as an Arab catastrophe is a shame on you, sir. You've got no knowledge and that's why you don't debate. You just no, 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 no. run away. Run away. Oh really? I come here every week, I get death threats every week from half the people here. Okay, we got the camera now, so it's probably going to get even more heated. Yeah, 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 yeah. Against non-white man. Against non-white man. Of course. That is. You told me in my face you hate Muslims. Do so, I? Yeah, you did. You what told did I say me in about my face you so what, what did the, the Palestinians do did before did the Israelis came? What did you say about so There was no such thing. Big liar. There was no such thing as the Palestinians. When I refer to the Palestinians, I'm referring to the population. You're talking about the Muslims and the Christians, but not the Jews. No, there was actually a Jewish. But they didn't see themselves as Palestinian. Do you know where the term Palestine comes from? Okay. But what, it doesn't no, matter no, what they it's saw themselves super as. Most, important. most of them were Muslim. Am I mistaken or not? Most people were Muslim. How, how many people are we talking? How many people? Yeah. I'm asking you a question about proportion. No, no, yeah, yeah, it's very important. So I think about 80% uh, or more. No, but how many people, not what percentages? How many people? I don't know, probably around 10 million. I don't know. That 10 million? Or more, probably, I don't know, I'm not sure. My friend, with, with all due respect, in 1882, there were 270,000 Muslims, Muslim Arabs, living in that area, yeah, in 1882. By 1940... What's that area? The area that is now modern-day Israel? So that, that area, yeah, modern Israel... So and many, in modern-day Israel, in what year there was how many? 1882. 1882. Yeah. In 1882... 1882, there was... 270,000 Muslim Arabs. Okay. By 1946... Or was it 45? One of the two. That had swelled to 1.25 million. Why? Because there was mass Arab immigration. Let me explain what actually happened. So there's not six so let, million Palestinian refugees abroad. Right? So this is perfect. Am I a refugee? I don't know. You tell me. My family was slaughtered in the Holocaust. We fled pogroms in Eastern Europe. I was born in this country. My father was born in this country. My mother was born in this country. Am I a refugee? That, that, wasn't, that wasn't my question. You are a refugee. No, no. That's fine. But that, I'm that not a refugee. So the, that, it's, it's really important. It's really important. So just, my, I, my let me respond. Is there's six million. There aren't. That's what I'm saying. There your knowledge of the your knowledge of the Palestinians of the conflict is very very. You've been programmed okay, with all your so, I'm, I'm open-minded. Okay. So can you just step out of the way of the camera? Someone's trying to film. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So. The Palestinians are the most interesting of people. Why? Because they have their own refugee agency. Every other refugee in the world falls under the United Nations UNHCR. And the, the Palestinians have their own agency, UNRWA, the United Nations Relief Work Agency. It's manned by 90-something percent Palestinians. So it's a Palestinian agency within the United Nations. They define anybody who lived, whose paternal ancestor lived in mandatory Palestine, which was a British um, territory, in mandatory Palestine between the years 1946 and 1948, as long as they lived there longer than two years, and they have one Jewish, uh, sorry, Palestinian or Muslim Arab, or, or one Arab paternal ancestor, they're considered a Palestinian refugee. They, so to put that in there, the, the Princess of Jordan, is considered a Palestinian refugee. Oh, no, no. Gigi Haddad or Gigi Haddad, how do you pronounce are, it? Vast, so two are, minutes, two minutes, two minutes. These are vast minorities. Two, 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 most two. people left because of you're, the you're mass missing, you're, There are virtually no Palestinians who fled the 48 conflict 
alive today. There's a tiny, tiny percentage of people who claim to be Palestinian refugees actually experience that violence. So the, you, basically the Palestinians have retained this political identity of refugee, even if they are multi-millionaire models living in America, who are the, who are, who are the children, who are the children, who are the children. I have, I have personally three or four, three friends that are descendants of Palestinians. Perfect, and I'm the descendant of Holocaust okay, victims. It We're doesn't make history. me a refugee. You are rewriting the word refugee, and it goes, it's exactly the same. It goes exactly. They had to flee their homeland. They still have the keys to their homes that were essentially taken by the Israeli they, occupation forces. They weren't taken by the Israeli occupation of forces. They were. That's, occupation that's forces. What is it, are they not? Is Israel not occupying? So is, is, uh, are no. Israeli forces not occupying? Israel is not occupying anyone's land. Okay, why? What's the definition of an occupation? Can you define it? So, what is the definition of a Palestinian? Can you define it? Well, somebody that lives in the, in the region, maybe you can... Oh, no, no, I was going to say, maybe answer his question. Okay. Just ask, ask your question. So I will answer, but I'll answer and answer the first one. The reason why the palette, why I said... The reason it's important to define who a Palestinian is and what a Palestinian is, because then you can define what is and isn't an occupation. So the Palestinians only became a nation in the 60s. Prior to that, you had Arabs who were living in... Um, in Hebron, you had Arabs who were living in Gaza, you had Arabs who were living in Ramallah. Yeah, these people can, can and and they didn't them. identify as Palestinian. Palestinian what nationalism, did they Palestinian, they, they did, they are either they, they, Muslim, um, yes. Muslims. So, so just because they didn't identify with the state, now all there wasn't they a state, they rights. didn't have a collective identity, is so what I'm telling they, you. So then, then it's justifiable to take their home. In they the didn't, land. their homes weren't taken, this is what I'm telling you. This is what I'm telling you. What are you telling me? That the homes weren't taken? The homes weren't taken. Okay, well, that, I can show you multiple documentation. Oh, perfect, bring it. Sure, right now? You yeah, right now. It. And while he's doing that, while he's looking for the documentation, what I will explain, what, what I... What, he's lost, he's born in his country's mum. his country's father. He's here refugee, that's what we're trying to say to you. No, well, I, I guess... <laughs> it, 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 I, it's, it's a hard question. No, I don't, it's no, not a hard no, question. No, no, no. A, refugee a refugee is someone yes, who is fleeing yes. conflict. Yes, a refugee is fleeing conflict. That's what I'm saying. The Palestinians who are living in Lebanon, who are locked in a ghetto, surrounded by a wall, who aren't allowed to purchase property, who aren't allowed to access um, the same health care and education as Lebanese people, yeah? They are not refugees. They are oppressed Arabs who are refused citizenship by the Lebanese. And where did they leave? What did they, You're why talking are they about in that red situation? Herring, though. It's a red what herring, led them to that situation? Inherently, it's a red herring. The reality is, whoever the, whoever the reasons are, there's hundreds of thousands, millions, whatever number you want to use, of Palestinians who are stateless because of the country. They are stateless for one reason. That are, are stateless due to the actions of the war of independence, Nakba, whatever way you want to call it. Now there's no there's more than one if there's more than one culprit to the to there's more than one culprit is the idea that Israel is solely to blame and that the Palestinians want peace and everyone is completely the Palestinian Authority love the conflict as it is, and the fact is that the Palestinians have leadership. That's a very well known fact. That their leadership and they're getting sold down the river by their leadership. But it doesn't absolve Israel of responsibility. It doesn't deny the Nakba as it was. The Nakba did not happen. The Nakba was a genocidal war that was waged against your, your family, my family, in Israel. It was a genocidal war that was declared by five Arab armies who invaded. Yeah? No, it was, I mean, you can count the Saudis if you want, but it was five Arab armies, you can count the Arab militias if you want, but it was effectively five Arab armies that invaded Israel with all their might. And if they had not invaded Israel, if instead the Arabs had declared independence in what the United Nations had proposed could be an Arab state, there would be no conflict, there would be no refugees. Again, that's a red herring. It's not a red herring. Let me explain you why it's a red herring. Inherently, we have to deal with the facts that we have to get on the ground. We can't go back and say 70 years ago. Yes, like I said, this is not a conflict entirely then on Israel. And yes, in 48, Israel was more than happy to put Arabs in, and that's correct. But if we're now going to say 70 years ago, your answer is up. No, no one's saying that. There are two million Arabs in Israel at the minute today. They're in the Knesset, they're in the government. They're the, the highest performing group in religion in Israel are Christian Arabs. They outperform religious Jews. In, in term, no, no, so, talk, so two minutes, two minutes. Let me, let me respond, let me respond. Let me respond to what he's saying. Let me respond. Oh, there, are, there are millions of Arabs who have complete equality with Jews in Israel today because they, didn't, they descend from the Arabs who did not fight 
Israel, who did not fight the Jews, and they coexist and have now coexisted for, for decades. In contrast, there is not one Jewish Palestinian because the Jews were ethnically cleansed from the, Jordan, the areas that Jordan and Egypt conquered. In a genocidal war, as I started the conversation, the leaders of the Arabs at the time declared, uh, this is Hajj bin al-Hussein a few years earlier, oh Muslims, Muslims, I declare a jihad, slaughter the Jews, slaughter them all. Ibn Pasha said that we will pave the skulls from Damascus to Jerusalem or Al-Quds with the skulls of Jews. If the Arabs had not waged this genocidal war, there would not be one Palestinian Arab refugee. There would not. There would be two states coexisting. Why, why Hopefully, the Why? Because, because the Arabs believed that this was Arab land. Because in the seventh century, it was conquered by Muslims. Yeah, in the seventh century. In the seventh century, it was conquered by Muslims. So they now believe religiously, it's the holy land to Muslims, and it can't be given up to Jews. So why, why was, it, was there not Jewish people living in the land of, from the seventh century all the way? Into there were the Jews. The Jews before the Muslim conquest, before the Muslim two minutes, before the Muslim, before the, before the Muslim, I've got the, I've got the microphone. Before the Muslim conquest, there were hundreds of thousands of Jews living in Israel. I am not here. They were just to, kicked out. I am not here to defend They've Arab leadership. The, the reality is, again. you have two Australia, people born. America, you have France, someone born in you, you have someone born in in, in Ramatashkol, and you have someone born in, born in Ramallah. Do you know what the drive distance between the two are? It's very short. Yeah. It's like 30 minutes. Yeah. That's the distance. One will gain full rights in the in the land that they were born. One will gain partial rights. Now, when the English took over North the island, um, Northern, when we took over Northern Ireland a hundred years ago, we partition of Ireland. Everyone in Northern Ireland was given full British citizenship. So, so. We have taken the Israelis, well, no, I have to do it. The Israelis have taken over a huge area. The, def the literal definition of the of occupation is you've taken over a group of people and you do not give them so the same rights as the people. This now, is, can I respond to that? No, let me know. Now, the correct the answer is we go to the Oslo Accord, which is what set out what, what the, the mistake, what the current situation is based on the Oslo Accord. Now, again, this is not the Palestine, absolving Palestinian leadership or blame, but it's rather the idea that Israel is some lovely. State, so the, you have the nation state law which inherently disenfranchised Druze who have given everything but the, all everything but in their loyalty to them but still get really the bad have you read the Palestinian basic law doesn't let Jews there no doesn't no no that's not the Palestinian, that, that, Palestinian basic law Again, I'm not no that's Palestinian law no Palestinian basic law mirrors the Israel justified the PA I think that They've got the same law on both sides, I'm basically. Not, yeah, but I'm not here to justify the PA. Okay. I'm here to discuss how the okay. state of Israel is inherited in Israel. So, so what the Jewish brother is doing, or what my Jewish brother is doing, is he is advocating that Israel declare sovereignty over the West Bank and give the Palestinians equal citizenship to the Jews. No, that's Most, what I'm so, well, you are because let I'm me not, let, let me respond. Let me respond. No, let me respond. Years. What do you expect them just to sit there? Okay, and do let me respond. Let me respond to, to what the you said. That with terrorism happened doesn't make it right. Okay. Like, like, it right. If I talk, just if I talk, they'll only hear me because I'm on. The, I've got the mic on me. I don't want to do that. I want to let you speak. But what I'm trying to say is respond to at one point at the time before we leapfrog over to many others. So many people say what you're saying. So Oslo established that there could be the potential for two states: a Palestinian state and an Israeli state living side by side. The people decided, the Palestinians and the Israelis agreed to divide the West Bank into three areas, area A, B and C. Area A would be under full Palestinian control. Any Palestinians living there, which was the overwhelming majority of Palestinians, How big was would, the area? it was smaller than area B and C combined, but, it, it, Much smaller. but the Palestinians agreed to it. You did. You, the policy, it was a path to peace with the idea that ultimately Area B would go to the Palestinians and Area C would be negotiated. Okay, so and can I just finish my point? I'll let him speak and then I can come to you. The Palestinians and the Israelis agreed to this division of land. And what that established was that Israelis would vote in Israeli elections. Palestinians would vote in Palestinian elections. Palestinians the Palestinian Authority uses the taxes collected from Palestinians to fund infrastructure in the Palestinian areas. What people who say they want the Palestinians to live under Israel are doing is removing the agency from the Palestinians and putting them under the Israelis. If you're not advocating for that... I'm not. What I'm saying, if you're, if, I can, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what I'm saying. The Oslo Accord was not supposed, it was not a final accord, it was a step one. Exactly. It was a step one. Now, here's a reality on the ground. The Oslo Accord was 30 years ago, give or take. It was just, uh, just over, just yeah. under 30 years ago. Nothing's moved forward. 
they, they keep. They, I'm not here, like I said many times, justifying Palestinian leadership. They're shit. I've been through that millions of times already. They're horrible. They are. But the idea that Israel here can sit high and mighty on the throne saying we did it. Israel did the bare minimum and since then has done jack shit. All right? And it's done jack Ooh. shit. So let's, let's actually look at the reality. Look at the reality. In all the states surrounding Israel, the Jews were ethnically cleansed. Yeah, let, me finish, let me finish. Let me finish. Herring, let me finish. Let me finish. It's not a red herring. If you allow me, if you allow me to respond, in Israel, in Israel, in Israel, in Israel, in Israel, in Israel <laughs> I've lost my chain of thought now. <laughs> so if you look at all the states surrounding Israel, ethnically cleansed the Jew. In contrast, the Arabs, who you say are oppressed, were given complete equality with the Jews in Israel. The law was set up, if you drive any street, which you've done many, many times, you'll see all the signs in Arabic, Hebrew, and English. If you drive any of the streets around uh, in the surrounding nations, you won't see any Hebrew signs, you won't see any Hebrews, because the Jews were ethnically cleansed. I was ethnically cleansed. I'm an Arabic Jew from Iran. I was ethnically cleansed from the area, as was all my family, as was pretty much all the Jews that were in Iran, the Palestinian Jews, it make it right. Egyptian Jews. But what? But, so, so two minutes, two minutes, and I will respond to that. What you're doing is unfair because what you're doing is you are saying that the Jews who fled the Holocaust, who fled Muslim persecution, who then landed and re-established their homeland in Israel, you are saying those, the victim of a genocidal war, Israel didn't invade Lebanon, Israel didn't invade Jordan, Israel didn't invade Egypt, Israel didn't inv invade Saudi Arabia, Israel didn't invade Syria. These nations invaded, these nations invaded Israel under the pretext that they were going to slaughter the Jews. The Jews survived. Had in 1948 the Palestinians, the Arabs, instead of trying to genocide the Jews, if they had declared independence, we wouldn't have one Jewish refugee or Palestinian refugee. We would have, we would have two nations living side by side, hopefully coexisting with trade deals, but instead the Arabs chose a path of genocide and conflict, which is still being waged to this day. For you to present that as an Arab catastrophe is a shame on you, sir, because it was your family and my family that were the victims of that war of aggression. That's not, you know, you, you mentioned multiple times that just because we survived the genocide, we somehow, the, the fact that we survived the Holocaust is not relevant. It really isn't. There's no relevance. No, no, it's 100% relevant. I let you finish, let me. It's not relevant just because no actions can justify, a Holocaust doesn't justify another Holocaust. Correct or incorrect? Is there no. a holo are you saying that there's a Holocaust? No, I'm asking you a question. I'm trying to preface it. Do you agree a Holocaust? Of course not. Awesome. So we're agreeing that. Now, in, in that we, all the two million Arabs, the, the two million Arabs in the state of Israel descend from the ones who were in, state, were in the land from, after 48. Yes. Not 67. We have given now. If Israel had given citizenship to the Arabs in '67, then it would be a different story. But since '67, they have lacked the basic rights. But that's because they want Palestinian citizenship. They don't want to be Israeli. It hasn't happened yet. Now, but what you're saying, you're imposing your and all my all my right with no, friends in Israel. Say what you're saying. No, I'm not telling you to sub to take over the area. The fact is, if you well, how else do they vote in Israeli elections if they're not given Israeli citizenship? The fact is, the current Israeli leadership, by their own words, don't quote me. Don't listen. You can ask them themselves. Don't have made the very good. Ben it is very clear he's against, he's, a, he's against a two state. Bibi, who's the only positive alternative to Prime Minister at the current moment, is also against it. Benny Gantz. Netanyahu has publicly said numerous times he supports a two state solution. He's probably, he's, uh, in English, in Hebrew, uh, multiple times he's said he hasn't. And uh, so what do you do? So you've got two contradictory statements. I'll take the one that the language of where his voters live. I'll take it really back uh, over the, the language of international politics, where there's huge international pressure as opposed to a voting bloc that won't vote for him. It's not that worried. Israel has people. people, so you can use language. So, so no, no. What I'm saying is, international politics is uh, is foreign relations is king rather than a pandering to a particular voting no bloc. Um, in local Abu elections. Hamza, I said in public and in London when he came, I really want a two-state solution as well. He also said that, but we know it's Jack. Just because he said it in English in London and Washington, we know it doesn't. It's what he tells his own people. Just like when he tells his own people that he's paying for people to go stab Jews, we take that as validity because that's the first, same thing with Bibi. Now, I don't care I don't what understand. he says in, in Washington or in London. So if way. you know this, why are you defending Abu Mazen and all I'm of? I'm not defending. Or their, the or their narrative, or their narrative, or their narrative, or their narrative. You're defending their narrative. I can see something 
with an open mind. Like I said, there's two wrongs in society, not that either black or white. So the conflict isn't black or white. It's very, very great. And the fact that it, this is the point, I'm not defending. You, you are confer So time. you use the term Nakba, yeah? What? So you, you use the term Nakba, yeah. describing the creation of Israel as a catastrophe. That's their narrative. That's not a Jewish narrative. That's not a liberal narrative. That's not a progressive do you, narrative. Do you, no problem, do you agree that with the creation of the state, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians became refugees overnight? So, me, me, let, let, let me answer. In every single war, Refugees are made. So of course there were Palestinian so the refugees. And there were Jewish refugees. So let me let me just which is their right. You asked so me a question. You asked me a question. You asked me a question. I'm answering your question. There were also Jewish refugees of that war. The Jews were the majority population in the old city of Jerusalem, the most holy place in the world for us. Stamp period. Yeah? We had a Jewish majority. We were ethnically cleansed and Jordan conquered it and established and annexed the entire West Bank, including our holy city, and declared it Jordan. Yeah? Yes. But you don't describe that as a Nakba. No, not because like I said, I said if Is that a Nakba? Is that a you catastrophe? Ask me why I use the word Nakba? And I'm answering you because the people who were made homeless at that time describe their experience like. Is no, the, uh, answer my question. Answer, is the uh, ethnic cleansing of Jerusalem a, a catastrophe? I will answer in a second. Now I could be a d and just say I don't give. A now it doesn't cost me anything to call it Nakba. The world doesn't suddenly change automatically. They don't all suddenly start killing people. It doesn't make a difference. So if I can make someone happy by just saying one word Nakba, I'll do it because I'm not a. D now, let me answer my question. Jews in the Middle East after the state of in Israel, Jerusalem, including Jerusalem. the old city where schools were destroyed, but yeah. um, cemeteries or the yeah, cemeteries every were single used synagogue pave, were destroyed. Were used to pave the streets outside the old, right outside the old city, is a catastrophe, and I don't deny that. But I'm not here looking to score. I'm trying to be as oh, as as open as possible and as well. Just be careful; your brains don't fall out. If it does. I'm sure you'll let me know. Okay, I'm just trying. Oh, yes, I will call it Nakba because that's what they want to call it, and it doesn't cost me anything. So it it costs you a lot it does because it. you confirm the lie. You re lie repeat the lie. Became refugees because, what lie? The lie that the Israelis were the cause of that. Oh, yeah, Israel, Israel, had, was a Israel was invaded. Yes. If Israel was not invaded, if Hajimin al Husseini, a Nazi collaborator, if Hajimin al Husseini hadn't started this whole this whole conflict under the pretext of oh, Muslim, Muslim, I declare a jihad, slaughter the Jews, slaughter them all, there would be no conflict. There would right. be peace. Yes, but it, Ben Gurion in his own diaries in the fifties wrote that there were Arab villages who were cleaned out. The fact that no, Israel, so, no, no, perfect, perfect. No, no, let's go there. Let's go. Let's go to, let's go to no, the villages. Let let's go to the villages. Yeah, Israel, I think you admit. I'm not sure. We'll get that in a second. Had a part in this catastrophe. So the, the idea that Israel is innocent of even that is absurd. So now me calling it that doesn't change it. It really does now. If me calling it Nakba really causes your heart attack, I'll stop saying it now because yeah, it bothers uh, you so dearly. A simple word, but I'd be more worried about that. For a I, I, a simple word bothers you so much. What, what, what bothers me is these videos will be watched by hundreds of thousands of people and they hear a Jew describing an attempted genocide of his family as a catastrophe. That bothers oh, me. Saying. That is exactly what you're saying. Well, if you edit your video very It's not my video. Well, anyone on the video will be able to judge it. Any Jewish person that's watching on this, like shame on, like your face is on camera saying this, anyone describing knows, describing the attempted like genocide, the attempted genocide of your family, that's of my family, saying, as a catastrophe. Not. Saying, oh, it's just words. That that bothers you so much. I, like, nonsense. Like literally, does Holocaust denial? Does that bother you? Wow. Okay. We're different. I believe, in free speech, I, be I believe in free speech, but it still bothers me. I have enough confidence in my beliefs, I don't care what six-year-old white man has to say over the internet. Really? Okay. I know what happened, I don't need someone to tell me that... Uh, you, you're very certain of the Holocaust, but not so certain, or you're just as certain of the Nakba? You, you keep on, you made the equivalency earlier between the Holocaust. I didn't, I said you kept saying. You said does the Holocaust just define another Holocaust? you kept saying every time you would preface it, you're saying we are Holocaust survivors. So what, what, what happened, know, what happened what, in 1939? Why, why? What happened in 1939? Holocaust started in 1939. No, 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 in 1939 in Israel, what happened in 1939 in Israel? What in particular you remember? The, the, the British White Paper, what did it do? Limited Jewish immigration. Exactly, what was happening in 1939? Jews were getting slaughtered. This is very important. If the British hadn't locked the gates of Israel to the Jews while opening them to Arab migration, 
Hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Jewish lives could have been saved in the Holo from the Holocaust. Yeah? So this is why the Holocaust is relevant. Hajimin al Husseini was a Nazi collaborator. Himmler wrote to him and told him, in, in, like literally, Hajimin al Husseini records this in his diary, that they're slaughtering the Jews in Europe. They are carrying out the Holocaust. Haj Amin al Husseini was complicit. The leader of the Palestinians was a Nazi collaborator. He tried to create Albanian death squads to go around and slaughter Jews. He was based in Berlin during the war. This is all important. This is all in the period of the Holocaust. Who were the people that fought the 1948 War of Independence? When they, were, when they heard the words, we are going to pave the skulls from Cairo to Jerusalem, sorry, Damascus to Jerusalem with the skulls of Jews. Who were the people that were listening to this? The survivors of the Holocaust. It's all relevant. And you are describing what they did, their defensive actions, as a catastrophe. Shame on you. What if both narratives are going? Now, let me go back to it. Let me. You keep here trying to look good. You're a YouTuber, you have to get the views. Now, you keep, you it's not my channel. I don't keep, come with any camera. You, you keep trying to say, you keep trying to say that ha you keep bringing the sins of the Palestinian leadership as somehow as the wrong. I never I used this. I never said that. I never said the word Palestinian leadership. You said that the 1947 war, which someone described the civil war, that was carried out almost entirely by civilian. It was civilian on civilian. The the what was then the Jewish prototype, uh, the the prototype of the IDF, the the Haganah, the Irgun. These were civilian civilian militias. On the other side, you had Palestinian militias. Sorry, what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I got distracted by my chain. Sorry, I, I lost my chain of thought there. I'll go. You go. I'll go back. I don't worry. We keep going in circles. I'm not here to defend. I'm merely saying the idea that the state of Israel can say I am mighty on the throne of goodness that it's right. It's absurd. Do you agree that? Do you agree with what you just said? No, I, I think Israel. I believe Israel is one of the most moral military forces in the history of military forces Has it done wrong? um of course every military's done wrong but i don't describe the night yeah or, I, wrong. Look, if you're fighting a war no, I mean, no, no hear me out hear me out if you have soldiers who are fighting a war in the heat of the moment are given guns who are surrounded by people that they think are trying to kill them both sides are going to do horrible stuff. That's the, the reality of war. Did, no, no, that, that's not what he's doing. He's not saying never. In, no, he's not saying there are individuals in the Israeli Defense Forces that have done wrong. He's saying the establishment of Israel, the de the Jews defending themselves from a war of a, a genocidal war of aggression. He's describing that as a catastrophe. That is not the same thing. Violence is justifiable. He does it to some extent. I believe that self-defense is 100% justifiable. I do not want to be under the boot. Jews that, Jew, we tried living under Muslims, didn't end well. We tried living under Christians. We were, we were, uh, in the 50s they were, the Almohads, the Almohads, the Almohads slaughtered the Jews. Read what Maimonides says about living under the Almohads. Just live in Morocco for five hundred years still now. Anyway, let's let's talk off topic. Let's go back to Israel and Palestine. Jew on Jew. You are saying I went to bed. I never spoke about the military itself, but rather the leadership in government. Yeah, but please admit, you are more safe in Arab countries. Nonsense. No, no, no. We have a million three hundred Jews in Morocco. You have no. You've got two Jews telling you no. We disagree with you. You may think we're safe under you. But we all, we were all ethnically cleansed. Now, in the sin I daven, I daven in an Adani synagogue. I daven in an Adani synagogue. I daven in an Adani synagogue. There's a gentleman who sits in front of me who watched a Muslim mob slaughter his father. The synagogue I pray in is named after the synagogue they raised to the ground. So don't tell me how beautiful it was living under Islam. I don't want to pay the jizya. I don't want to be a dhimmi. But back to the subject. I'm not you, you now you again another red herring you did that the state the state of that the, the idea of users you said one of the most moral armies in the world. I never I never will get the once mentioned any of the actions that have taken in the West Bank or in the Gaza Strip. I mentioned the state in itself. The, the state in itself. Now let's go let me Can I ask one quick question just for context? No. Are you opposed to the state of Israel on religious grounds? Yes. Okay, so it just helps the audience um, to to 
contextualize why we have such a strong difference of opinion. You are making arguments to authority, to religious authority, and I am making no, arguments based my, on secular. No, no, no. My beliefs, while maybe based on religion, can be backed off on facts. Now, I'm not here calling for the dismantling of the state, because the idea that if we give it to either the PA or Hamas, they'll butcher all of us there. Now, I'm not here calling thank for you, that. Thank you, thank you. Again, I'm not here defending the Palestinians there. I've been said that a million times over. I'm not here. But I don't also, the, the reason, that. How many times? The reason I said that is it explains why you would use a term like the catastrophe to describe the establishment of the state of Israel. What is it? The, the Bosnian Wars. You know the, Bos you know yeah. the Bosnian Wars? Uh, it's, it's not my area of expertise, but yes, I know the Bosnian Wars, yeah. They butchered the, 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 they butchered the, the, the Bosnian Muslims were butchered by the Croats and by the Serbs. No, but they claim. No, 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 no. They, they claim wait, both the Croats and the Serb, including leadership who are still alive now, that they were fighting for their independence, that they were fighting against genocide. That's their their line. They were fighting against it that justifies Srebrenica where they butchered 8,000 8, 8, 8, 8, Muslim men and, and, and boys. Now, the idea that you're fighting for your independence or you just survived the genocide is not an excuse to what happened. What happened? The reality is, based on ben Ben-Gurion, not my words, let's go with Ben-Gurion, the first president, the, the head of the provisional government of Israel and the first president, the prime minister of Israel. Reliable source for you or not? Yeah, yeah, no. He's a good source for you, just making sure. In his own diaries released in the 50s, he admits that the, uh, that the Igun, and the, uh, at the, the time was still Igun, they hadn't yet been completely put into the, uh, under leadership of the provisional government, cleared out villagers, Arab villagers. They, he admitted. Now, if that's not a catastrophe, you keep getting very hung up on that. If clearing out, ethnically cleansing villagers is not a catastrophe for you, what is? Okay, so can I respond to that? Please. So, every single Jew, every single Jew, was ethnically cleansed from the territory that the Arabs took. Let me respond, I, I listened to your response. In contrast, you have to go to villages, individual villages, which were held for operational positions, because as you have to re realize, the, these were civilian, com it was a civilian conflict, yeah? It was Palestinian civilians from villages fighting Jewish um, civilians from villages, yeah? The massacres that people talk about happened in these villages, yeah? Whether it's on the Arab side or the Jewish side. So these are military positions and there were a small number of villages that were emptied after they were used to attack Jewish positions. Yet yeah, we agree on that, I'm sure. If you're familiar with Benny Morris, who's the main advocate of what you're saying, he's the main historian that most people on both sides go to, what you'll find is almost every example of a village being emptied was for military defensive purposes. There were two examples of two cities that were actually removed of their populations. That was Lud and Ramla, yeah? And they were, there was, as conflict fought out, the Jews, tried, or the Israelis, tried to make peace with them. They agreed with the elders that they could have peace, but then the, the Arab Legion continued the fighting, and eventually those, um, those villages, I think it was the Arab Legion, I may be wrong on that, were emptied, and the population moved a couple of kilometers away to Arab-held positions. In contrast, so we can literally name each of the villages that you're talking about. We can name the cities. In contrast, every single Jew was ethnically cleansed. Their synagogues were burned. Ancient communities where your ancestors, my ancestors are buried, were emptied. It was the first time in centuries, thousands of years, where there were no Jews living here because they were ethnically cleansed by the people that you're defending. And you're describing what the Israelis did as the catastrophe. What was cause and what was effect? Never. Yeah, the cause was Israelis were the, the invaded, invaded the in a genocidal war. Let me Morocco, uh, let me, let me, uh, and anyway, it's made him as a Jew, Jew on Jew at the moment. We can go Jew and Gentile in a minute. Let me, let, let me give a very good example. When the, 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 good fight. Not at all. It's just I rarely get a conversation here at Speaker's Corner with a, a fellow Jew. And I think the viewers will like to hear two conflicting Jewish opinions. You know, it's not racist. You know the Good Friday Agreement? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Good Friday no, Agreement, one of the agreements we made with the IRA, the real yeah. IRA, whatever they call themselves, this Sinn Féin, was that we gave letters of pardons. We gave to actual terrorists who were on the run, who said that you will, oh, we will not prosecute you. In Parliament, there have been debates now, Johnny Mercer, the former Minister for Veterans Affairs, was bringing up the fact that veterans are still harmed being hounded for what they did in Northern Ireland 40, 50 years ago, when actual terrorists walk around and sit in Parliament. He said it's not fair. Now, I disagree with him, and this is where my example is. I don't hold the IRA to any high standard. They're an active terrorist group. They, they attack kids. I don't hold them to that. I hold British military personnel to the highest standard. 
the same thing here. You want to keep bringing the Arab Ooh. thing. You want to bring bigotry of low expectations, much? What? You're holding Jews and Arabs to a different standard. That sounds no, quite I'm racist. Holding my people. I hold my people to a higher. Sounds standard. quite racist. I hold them to the same standard. No problem. I'm Go down there. I hold my people because it's my people and they got to do with me. When he does something, when he does something wrong, well, yes, it's wrong, it's wrong. I, but I don't run around telling him it's wrong because the reality is it's something he has to take care of. When your own leader, you have to acknowledge the flaws within yourself. You, your, langu coming, your, your language was, I hold the British to a higher standard. I hold military personnel into a terrorist organization, to a madrous mob that anti Jews out to a general savior maniac, to a general savior crazy in the in the no in the in the 40s and 50s, I don't hold them. They were a genocidal mob being riled on, being riled on by years of hate and of, on their leadership. Do you believe it was religiously motivated in 1948? Religion played a part in it. Uh, no, I'm not in terms of Islamic, as a, because most of the Jews were secular for those that, I mean, he, he'll be very familiar, but the audience might not. Most of the Jews that were fighting were socialist, secular, there were very few religious Jews was on the other side. A part of it. Now, there's a, you want to go, but you want that religion was used clearly by, by religious leadership. I'm the Mufti of Jerusalem. Yeah, he was Mufti 100, of Jerusalem. 100%. So religious leadership, of course, played a part in it. Now, you want to know if I think that's the correct way. I'm not arguing over that's the correct way of religion, because that's a stupid conversation. I think you know that as well. Just to argue that's the correct way of the religion. No. But religion played a part in it. And that the fact that they were led on by that, I don't hold them to a high standard. The Arab leadership, whether it was Jordan, like king, the, the king of Jordan, who was not a very religious man, is on record calling it a jihad. The Arab leadership were able to rally huge armies under the flag of jihad. That's why the Mufti described the world as, oh, Muslims, Muslims, I declare a jihad, slaughter the Jews, slaughter them all. The entire it, religion played a fundamental part in this. But like I said, I hold what my people did. I want, I, it's my people, so I have to answer for them. I do not have to answer for the, for the, for the Muslim in Cairo. I don't, I have nothing do, to do Can I ask you a question? Do you despise, how do you view the Zionists of 1948? What, what, what light do you hold them in? Are you, like someone, or even earlier, someone like Theodore Herzl, Ben Gurion, who, how do you, how do you view these men? What sense? Like, are they, like, obviously they're Jewish, but are they good men? From a religious sense? No, from a, from a human sense. Some of them, some Zionist leaders were, some weren't. I come from a very Zionist family. Okay, okay. My family, my, my, my father did so, did so, and so my grandma. You're just OTD. My grandma, okay? <laughs> okay, so okay. They lived on a kibbutz, they lived in shipping containers when they came from Europe. Yeah. They lived in shipping containers for the first 10 years of their life. Some of them very Zionist family, and uncles currently doing the service. All right? Cousins. I have all of them. I'm not, I come from, so I'm not coming from those fanatics that go to the Torah Can I, can I, are people. you the only one, or is it like your immediate family are also quite anti-Israel? Like my father did so. Okay. Yeah. Well, now, I'm not like the Torah card with the idiots. They're, I'm not. Like I said, I've never come to justify the Palestinian Arab, whatever the position you want to call, but rather to call out the criticism within the Israeli position. That's what I come to. And like I said, if I have to, if I have to choose an option, Hamas, current Israeli leadership, any day, Israeli leadership, PA. Let me make that clear. The Israeli leadership stands. I don't choose them for myself out of selfish reasons. That's effectively like saying if I had to choose between a really nice, respectable gentleman and this murderous rapist, I choose the really nice, respectable. It's not much of a comparison. You're not doing much of a service I'm not, I'm when you're not, saying you choose. Saying, I'm not coming here like the Torah Carter who, yeah, we want Hamas to rule the whole thing like fuck not. I'm not coming here like that. I'm very realistic to what the things are on the ground. And that I have a major issue that tax, my taxpayer money is used to fund my Jews and killing Jews in Israel. The British aid is sent to the Palestinians. What British aid is sent to the Palestinians? Oh, to the Palestinians. I thought you were going to say to the Israelis. Yeah, yeah, no, no, Palestinians. The British aid is sent yeah. to Palestinian leadership and they use it to spend it. Yeah. As, as Abu Hamza said, if we have one dollar left, we're going to use it to fund the martyrs. I have an issue with that. I do have a major issue with that. I have an issue when, when Labour politicians go there and fall over and, and listen to his anti Semitism, Holocaust now, and just sit there, leave up Palestine. I have an issue with that. I do. I'm not coming here. From, from, from a, I'm just very open-minded about it, and that my anti, that I'm having to be religious anti-Zionist is not relevant to the matter, really, because that doesn't, that hasn't affected my thought at all. Did you? Uh, I will always defend the state of Israel in public. Were you hostile to to th these aspects of Israel before you formed your anti-Zionist religious positions? My what came first? Chicken or the egg? Yeah. <laughs> No, I can't answer you because these are forming over many years. Okay. Now, I will always defend the state of Israel in public, in other forums. I will, because when the other options... Are
I don't know. But when you're here, and, like, if it wasn't you, if it was Ali Dawa or Mahmoud Tijabi, I would have no problem yeah. defending. I've defended the state of Israel here many times. I have. And I will continue to do so. But the idea that there's pure bliss and high moral good is not true. And even if you go take away from the fact of the Nakba, if you go to 67, let's forget the Nakba. Let's go. Let's start. Do you want us to wrap up? Up to you, guys. Yeah, you keep looking over there. Like, we can wrap it up if you want for the camera. Up no, we haven't wrapped yet, but we can if you want us to. Do you want to film that? Oh, he's, he's walked off anyway. And my biggest issue with current leadership is not regarding the Nakba or the war in men. It's after 67. The fact that we took over, the Israel took over millions, hundreds of millions of uh, Muslims, who, and the reason I use the word Muslims is very important, Palestinian Muslims, who inherently were very unlikely ever identify with the Jewish state. Woo! With that's, a, that's, that's not true. Were very under, were most uh, in nine, literally this year, the, well, Pal the Arabs of East Jerusalem, just one fact, then I'll let you respond. The Arabs of East Jerusalem, so Palestinian no, Muslims. No, no, you've been this case a long time. There. Can we talk about yeah, the no, peace? No, no, because I'm talking to him. No, we want some Talk about the yeah, peace. Yeah, well, we can There's talk about peace, peace in a minute. Let, he was making a point, I want to respond to that. You're kind of quite rude interrupting our conversation. 93% um, of East Jerusalem Arabs said they would rather live under Israel than under the Palestinian Authority. So that, the, the reality is changing. To, to what you're describing because in Israel you have Arab judges that send Jewish prime ministers and Jewish presidents to jail and the Palestinians look at that and say we wish we could do that to Abu Mazen we wish we could do that to Hamas we wish that we could throw our corrupt leaders in jail that Israel is the only place in the entire region where Jews Christians Muslims Arab Druze it doesn't matter have equality they don't it's not true Certain really Arabs. Which now, Arabs? The Arabs who have Israeli citizenship, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, but that's my point. The reality is, I have a question, answer me okay. normally. If you want, you can turn off your recording. No, no, I don't. <laughs> Do you ever think there will be a Palestinian state? Um, I would happily support a Palestinian. That, that, that was no, my question. Answer me yes or no. Do you ever think there will be? Not do you want one and all the semantics? I, Do you ever my, my honest answer is there could be. I don't, I don't know what the outcome is going to be. That's my genuine. There will be. See, I said, be. No, I said there's a, there is the potential for one. Give me a percentage. I would say it's looking increasing, so I'd maybe say I would be may, probably 50-50 on it. 50-50 is where I, my, I, I honestly am. Yeah, I don't agree with those numbers. I think it's much lower, but let's go with 50-50. Yeah. Let's go, let's go with those numbers. So you have millions of people who are currently stuck in limbo land. Yeah. Now you agree there's a 50% chance they don't get their sick. So let's go on that 50% chance. Let's work with them, we'll come back to the other. There's 50% chance that they never get the state, which means they'll be inherently stuck in a limbo land under a military occupation. I, did, I now, think there's a 100% chance they won't be stuck in limbo land. Why would things happen? Israel's not going to Because I, I, I think that's... So I met an incredible person when I did a documentary with the BBC who was a, a Palestinian and at 17 years old, he was jailed for throwing a hand grenade at an IDF soldier. While he was in jail, he decided he wanted to learn about his enemies, so he decided to investigate the big lie, which it was called in his society, which was the Holocaust. As he read about the Holocaust, he realized that everything he'd been told about his enemies was a lie, and these are people that have suffered. And so when he was released from jail, he came to Bradford in the UK and did his, uh, I think it was a doctorate, on the Holocaust. He then went back to Israel, or back to the West Bank, and his daughter, who was eight years old, was shot in the back by an IDF soldier. So he devoted his life, post being like jailed for terrorism, to building bridges and learning about Jews. And then a Jew shot his daughter, eight-year-old daughter in the back. He was paid compensation by the state. It was a horrendous killing. I don't know if it was an accident, intention. I don't know what happened to the soldier. He didn't share that with me. But the state admitted responsibility. And this man has dedicated his life to peace. I met him and he told me that peace is going to come between the Israelis and Palestinians. You can either be an obstacle to that peace or you can be part of the process. And I believe in what he said. I don't believe the Palestinians will be stuck in limbo forever. I don't believe the reality of today is going to be the reality of 50 years time. Things change. I don't know what they're going to evolve into. I don't know what's going to happen, but I, I have complete faith that the reality today is not going to be the reality in 50 years. I disagree with you. You disagree? Okay, um, let's see. Hopefully we're still acquainted in 50 I'm years happy. time. I'm happy to be wrong. I hope you're wrong. So do I. Yeah.
Okay, um, we're, we're wrapping up the <laughs> Show what's up.